Welcome back, Spartans, for more Hunt the Truth. And goddamn, these episodes just keep getting better. Seriously, 343, Eisenberg, how do you do it? How? It shouldn't be possible. There should be upper limits to the levels of height. And yet here we are, me looking a gift horse in the mouth. But enough gushing, let's get into this. The episode starts with Maya on her way to her expert, as mentioned in the previous episode. During the trip, she reflects on what just happened. Oni was willing to sacrifice her and Ari to kill Ilsa. She was a disposable asset at the end of the day, and worse, the cycle of bombings and rebellion just seemed to repeat on an eternal cycle. As we arrive at Maya's destination, we learn that we're at her personal safe house. Taking a lesson from Ari, Maya had established it to keep in touch with her previous life, as being Pharaoh meant that Maya Sankar was basically wiped from existence. Communications blackout technology made sure she had privacy and secrecy, even with an Oni AI like Black Box present. Upon entering, Maya, toting the unconscious Boswick, is greeted by a fan-favorite character thought dead by some, but I'd say not by most, Meshach Muradi. Indeed, as many had guessed, Maya had not killed the little hacker. As we learn later, when she had broken into his house to kill him, he had been so frightened that when trying to flee, he ran straight into a wall and knocked himself out. Pitying him, Maya decided instead to bring him to her safe house, where he had been for the past few months. As Maya lays Boswick on a bunk, Black Box makes himself known. And as with every previous time that Black Box introduced himself, it creates quite the reaction. Expressing surprise at Meshach for not being dead, BB also notes that Meshach looks like he may have been tortured. Maya says he hasn't, but Meshach begs to differ. Of course, his definition of torture isn't what BB and Maya were thinking. Cut off from Waypoint, no communications, no slush, and best of all, he's forced to read, GASP! PAPER BOOKS! THE HORROR! So yeah, Meshach is just tech-deprived and remains hilarious as ever. As an aside, I'm happy to know that the paperback format survives the next 500 years. I've made it no secret I'm not a big fan of digital novels. No, I don't care if they're easier to transport. There's no replacement for the feel and smell of a physical book, goddammit. There are other reasons I prefer physical, but that's another discussion. Anyway, Meshach calms down pretty quickly when Maya lets him take a look at BB. Naturally, Meshach's first question is about BB's avatar. BB explains that he feels no need to make himself more palatable to humans, and being pure intellect, he chooses to appear as a cube. He is what he is, and he is Black Box. Mishak, God bless him, notes that BB actually appears blue, and decides to call him Blue Cube. BB doesn't take kindly to this, and shocks the poor guy. Maya quickly separates them. Being pulled aside, Meshach tries to dissuade Maya from trusting BB, especially since it now knows that Meshach is alive. He then goes off on a mini rant about how AI are created, ultimately referring to them as computer zombies. God damn it, Meshach, how oh, we've missed your unique point of view. Tired of the squabbling, Maya directs the discussion towards the real issue, the anomalies and the awakening of the Guardians. Well, I say Guardians, but Maya obviously doesn't know what actually happened. She gives Meshach the data chip Ari gave her, along with a compad to access Waypoint and the slush. Meshach is naturally overjoyed. And of course, the first thing he does is check what is likely the future equivalent of Facebook. To his utter shock, he lost his place on the leaderboards for Ungoy Farmer. <laughs> and just like that, there's already a market for a hot new mobile game. Back to business, though, as Meshach starts shifting through the slush, Maya goes to check on Boswick. Boswick, groggy but awake, is understandably upset. So, she charges at Maya with a scalpel. Maya has a pretty easy time disarming her, but calming her down? That's another story. Maya tries to talk to her, but Boswick rebukes everything she says. Finally, Maya decides to try the truth. She lets Boswick ask anything she wants, and Maya answers truthfully. And it's not just to calm her down, Maya genuinely wants to tell the truth. While the two are talking, Maya opening up to someone for the first time in years, they're suddenly interrupted by Meshach. Meshach had discovered that the Master Chief was dead. But of course, he didn't just stop there. Looking through the slush, he found the chatter people had put out there. Though we know this series was written and recorded well before the recent trailers, I can't help but feel that it's a nice nod to the speculation the writers knew would likely come from fans as a result. Anyway, Meshach says that many believe the Chief is still alive. When Maya asks what the UNSC could hope to gain, Boswick chimes in, noting that by declaring him dead, the UNSC cemented the Chief's legacy as a hero. If he were proving himself to be more trouble than he's worth, which we know they think he is, this would, as I have been saying, secure his place in history as a hero. Anyway, Maya asks what the UNSC could be covering up by declaring the Chief dead. Meshach speculates that it would only make sense if the truth were scarier than the cover-up. He speculates further that the Biko story may have in fact been a dry run, a way to test the waters for this sort of scenario. As Maya thinks about it, she can't help but think of the parallels to her own recent experience. 
All it took were a few calculations pointing to a target's death having a higher value than her life. Maya then pushes the discussion towards the anomalies. Mishak was only able to find one theory, one that's kind of... out there. As I mentioned back in my breakdown of Episode Zero, the Triad Twitter account was one of the first indications we had of Hunt the Truth's return. Ever since, people have been curious as to how the cult would be tied into Season 2. Well, time for them to enter the light. The Triad are declaring these anomalies as signs of the coming transcendence. Even more interesting, Das Gevedim, the founder, has returned. As you may recall, Dosk had secretly assumed a new identity on Beta Gabriel during the Human Covenant War, giving the illusion of his transcendence. Now he's back claiming, For your struggles, I have willed myself back to this plane of causation and particle, so that I might illuminate the meaning of these events. Exquisite transcendence is yours for the taking. Side note, I'm almost 100% sure that that's Mark Hamill. But yeah, Dosk has returned, claiming transcendence is upon us all. Interestingly, in a recent episode of The Sprint, we were shown a scene where some grunts were doing a chant supposedly meant to keep a Guardian asleep, and told the Covenant doesn't want the Guardians to wake up. Kind of a funny contrast to the Triad's goals, don't you think? Moving forward, BB tries to encourage Maya to return to Oni with the data, but in light of the recent events, Maya is starting to doubt Oni would do the right thing with it. That defection theory looks more and more accurate with each episode. Suddenly a call comes through, even though it should be impossible. The call from Noah. He's called to let Maya know that an extraction team wants to bring her in and is on their way to her location. Maya immediately hangs up and prepares to leave. While Noah insisted that nothing bad would happen to Maya, she knew what Oni really had in mind. Midnight facility. The chances that she would emerge from there again were slim, especially now. Maya sets a timer on some explosives she had stored under the bed, then she, Mishak, and Boswick make a run for Maya's ship. Bullets raining from the sky, an explosion from the safe house behind them, the group barely makes it out alive. Although at this point, Maya is all but dead to the world. Maya's Sankar basically gone thanks to Oni, and Pharaoh now compromised. And just when it seems like nothing else could go wrong, another ship appears on their sensors, coming in fast. It forces Maya's ship to decelerate, the group only saved by a last minute warning by Bibi. The ship's power is cut and the boarders force their way in. Maya had thought it was Oni, but it turned out to be something far worse. Kigyar Pirates. Seriously, how do these episodes keep one-upping each other? <laughs> but really, this was a hell of an episode, and damn, that ending! Kig Yar showing up? Yes, please! Now, interestingly, the description Maya gives is that of a clearly male Kig Yar. As you may or may not know, the Kig Yar are actually a matriarchal society. I'm hoping that in the next episode, we might get to meet a Kig Yar female shipmaster or something. I mean, there are certainly male-led groups, but I've always enjoyed encountering the females, they're usually pretty ruthless. And just for some crazy-ass speculation, seeing as Hunt the Truth has a wonderful habit of bringing back underutilized characters, how cool would it be if Cholvan from Mortal Dictata were leading these Kigyar? If not her, maybe Sev Fall, another Kigyar from Kilo 5. Or maybe both. A man can dream. Well, that just about does it for this episode. Before we go, however, be sure to take a close look at the image released alongside this episode, Mashak's Conspiracy Wall. There are tons of easter eggs from both the first season of Hunt the Truth and the expanded universe at large. Cedra is mentioned, we see some descriptions of the anomalies Mishak had been tracking, a very important detail about Sully, and so much more. Thanks for joining me as always, this has been Halo Cannon, and until next time, keep shining for transcendence is upon us all. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.